the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We sang with you. You just couldn't hear us because we were <laughs> Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Father God. Lord, we love you on this morning and we give honor and recognition to you, God. Lord, I pray, God, that you will anoint me to teach this lesson, God, with power and clarity in the name of Jesus, that you will bless, bless every Sunday school attendee, Father, in the name of Jesus, and that your Holy Spirit will fall and we will have a wonderful time in class today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to, let me let everybody in. And Okay. Welcome to um, today's Sunday school. My name is, oh man, there we go. Okay. My name is Patrice and I am so happy to be your teacher on the day. Good evening. Good morning, Sister Wendy. Today's lesson is the Good Shepherd and the Bible basis is coming from John 10 verses 7 through 18. Today's Bible truth is God anoints and equips good leaders for his people. Why did that come up here? I'll tell you, every time I use my laptop, all kind of weird things happen, you guys, sorry. And so God anoints and equips good leaders for his people. Memory verse is when and when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. And that is from John chapter four, verses, um, John 10, chapter four. The lesson aim is by the end of today's, by the end of this lesson, we will discuss why good leadership is important. And I'm, I'm happy we're gonna discuss why good leadership is important. It's important because first Peter, first verses, chapter five, verse two says the shepherd, Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Verse four, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Anyone the Lord calls to leadership, my God, in the church, we must remember that we are to serve the flock and watch over them as Christ watches over us. And our reward is the crown of glory, which does not fade away. The under shepherd must feed, must feed and care for the sheep as Christ did, and he shall feed and I, oh, I got Isaiah 40, chapter 11. It says, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in the bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. That's what God does for us. And when we are in leadership positions, we have to remember that the sheep belongs to God and not to us. So does anyone want to comment on that? No, I can say something. I think it's important. <laughs> God's people, all people are God's people. And sometimes, you know, the flesh will lead us to feel possessive or, you know, have certain, you know, outlooks or our mindsets and say certain words. So that's why when we, when we hear ourselves saying certain things, I'm glad that the Bible says iron sharpens iron. So, you know, if I say something that is not aligned with the word of God, I'm grateful for one of my sisters or brothers in Christ to take me aside and just say, you know, Sister Quinn, you know, the Bible says this, maybe pray about it or, you know, and I'm glad that as, you know, he, he, uh, we're all leaders. So I'm grateful for how God has appointed, you know, the leaders, the under shepherds, did you say, oh, yeah, the under shepherds or mm -hmm. 
um, all of us in our respective places. So I'm grateful for how God has done that. Amen. Thank you, First Lady. Does anyone else, anyone else want to comment? No? Okay, moving on. So discuss why God, good leadership is important. Trust and rejoice that Jesus is the good shepherd and describe the characteristics of a good shepherd that we follow in others. Background scriptures, as I mentioned, is coming from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 18. The lesson overview. Life needs for today's lessons to apply Jesus' example of good leadership, to trust and rejoice that Jesus is the good shepherd. Bible application, to begin and understand and recognize good leadership in every area of their lives. Students' response, students will discern characteristics of good leadership and work to develop them in their own lives. And I'll go first for me, I like the student's response that students will discern good characteristics of good leadership. That is very important that we discern those things in our leaders because as First Lady said, iron sharpens iron and our leaders, they, you know, they, they walk, they watch over our souls. They are the overseers of us. And we have to make sure that we are aligning ourselves with, with leaders who are aligned with God. Anyone else? Yes, Minister Hall. Good morning, Minister Hall. Good morning. I agree with you, and it's so important for us to remember because, like you said earlier, they watch over our souls and they know what they could see. Sometimes God allows them to see things that we cannot see, and they give us one to let us know how to take care of a situation or a problem in our lives. And it's good for us to listen to them because it would help us out, not only spiritually, so, but naturally. So, so it's so important to, to listen to them. And sometimes I feel like when they give us directions, if we don't like what they are saying, we tend not to listen to them, not realizing that in the long run, we should have listened to them. And God will get to a point that something happens to you in life. You, you know what? I should listen to my past or my first lady. So it's so important us to realize that, is that they want the best for us. They don't want to hurt us, but they want the best for us in our lives. Amen. That's good, Minister Hall. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Yeah, I'd like to add, um, when I, um, I, the Bible application really uh, sticks out to me, to begin to understand and recognize good leadership in every area of our lives. You know, um, one of the greatest, it's like what I've learned along the way, is the best teacher, the greatest teacher for me, was the person who was a good leader, uh, who was not intimidated by what they saw in me. That is the, that was very important to me. And I learned that Jesus, no matter where Jesus was, it's something my grandfather always said, you notice wherever Jesus was, he was never intimidated. He was not intimidated by the situation. And he always came from a position of love to minister to the person. That's what a good leader does. If a great leader looks and says, oh, I see Sister Patrice has the potential to go and be a national evangelist, okay? And, and, and when I say national, I'm not talking about the way Kojic means national. This is kind of like we get a national card. I mean, big, you know, they can see things in you. Sometimes they'll try to stun it. They'll try to kill it. They'll try to hold on to it. Because instead of being a, a good shepherd to grow the sheep, they try to hold on to the sheep. So I've learned uh, that's very important to understand uh, good leadership. It means they, that person may not be with you for always, but you are imparting to that sheep, making sure that sheep is healthy and guiding them. That's great and important. So, that's important to me. I mean, that's I have something that it was instilled to me by my grandfather. And I've watched it as I've grown and realized that is very true. Hey Amen. Dr. Carmen, thank you for that. I agree 100%. Good leaders, and we'll see in today's lesson that the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep, 
The shepherd watches over the sheep. The shepherd protects the sheep. The shepherd makes sure the sheep are flourishing and they nurture them and they do everything in their power to make sure that the, not only are the sheep, the sheep are thriving, but the whole entire flock is thriving. And that's why I thank God that um, he led me to Saints Home Church of God in Christ because I didn't experience that from the church I came from um, previously. Like Dr. Carmen said, they tried to kill it, you know, especially if you didn't agree with them, you know, but the Lord showed me that, you know, not all, not all shepherds are like that. There are still shepherds there that will love you, that will nourish you, that won't be intimidated by the gifts that I put in you. Don't, don't won't be intimidated by the anointing because it's not our anointing, it's God anointing that the anointing that he has given me, you know? And so I'm glad that I got a chance to see that, you know, because when I left the previous church, I don't want to have nothing to do with working in a church. I didn't want to serve. I didn't want to be in leadership. I wanted to go back to what I was comfortable with um, at Love and Unity, but God did not let me. And I'm glad that I obeyed the voice of God because I love my pastor and I see what a true shepherd really is and how we are to work together in the body of Christ to help each other. It's not about one person. It's about all of us. Anyone want to comment? Yeah, the Bible application is mine too. And both you and, and Dr. Carmen made some wonderful, um, brought some wonderful insight because, you know, we should, you know, in addition, you know, the body, we are the body of Christ, but everywhere we go, the Lord goes with us. He's everywhere already. But because we are intended to be, you know, living epistles read of men, as leaders, we have witnessing opportunities on our job, in our family, in every area of influence. And when we don't do what God has put in us to do, then we're, we might be missing out on an opportunity to plant a seed or water a seed so that somebody else is, is drawn to Christ. So, you know, it's, it's a good opportunity to, um, and to your point, Sister Patrice, we, you know, we can learn from those missteps that we've seen in our past, you know, the enemy wants to try to use them to make us shrink, but, you know, thank God for, you know, what he put in you and what he put in Dr. Carmen and what he put on everybody that's on this, in this class today. You know, we thank God that we've learned from the, the experiences that we've had to not do those things to other people or to not perpetuate, you know, those, those, those things that other people may have done to us in the past. Amen. That's right. We learn what not to do. We learn to pray. We learn to hide ourselves in the Lord. And we learn to love and forgive. Thank you, First Lady. So I have a video. We're going to watch a lot of videos today. And I'm going to play this video right now. The Good Shepherd and His Sheep. Can you guys From see? John chapter 10. Do I have to go to another screen? No, let me pull it up for you. It wasn't showing. Okay, there you go. Truly, I tell you, Pharisees, any the good shepherd and his sheep. From John chapter 10. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus again said, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. 
Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. The Jews who were there gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The works I do in my father's name testify about me, but you do not believe, because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. That was a good video. Sister Patrice, if you're talking, you might be muted. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, um, I really like that video because it was a really a good overview of the, um, the lesson that we are studying today. And um, in the scripture, verse 13, it says, uh, the hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. So the video didn't discuss that part. And so as we mentioned earlier, we must discern what a hireling is from a shepherd. A hireling does not really care for the sheep. They are just there to do a job. And in verse 15, it says, as the father knoweth me, and so know I, the father, I lay down my life for the sheep. So a shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep. And metaphorically, the under shepherd lays down his life, you know, he lays down the old man, his behaviors, his ways, his dispositions, meaning like his natural um, nature or temperament for the flock. And he views every individual as a sheep and a soul worthy of salvation and the love of the father. And when I was reading this, I was reminded of David, how David fought off bears and lions for his sheep. Why did David do that? Because David wasn't a hireling. David, they, the sheep belonged to David and he loved David. And David knew that his sheep were harmless. When you, when you look at sheep, sheep are very, are very harmless and they're very vulnerable. And half of them are, they can't even see very well you know, and, and they wander off. And so they must be safeguarded at all times. And David did everything in his power to protect the sheep. Do anyone want to comment? No? Okay. And so in verse 16, it says, and the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them 
I also, um, them also I must bring. And so the video did discuss that. And so, you know, as Christ will bring all of the sheep, his flock together one fold, we have to remember that every person that is a Christian is part of the body of Christ. You know, and I believe it was Dr. Carmen who mentioned it before, you know, we may have different denominations, we may worship differently, our worship might look different, but at the end of the day, we are all part of the body of Christ. Do anyone want to comment? No? Yes, I just love that part when you're saying he was talking me to other sheep that he have. I just love that part because I let this lets me know that he was thinking about us in the future. So I just love that. I just love that part that it really got my attention. We said other sheep that I have, which you now this for them also I must bring out. But he was talking about us, and I just love him every time somebody reads that scripture. I really get excited and I just really get close to God in prayer because I thank God for that um in particular scripture. Amen. Yes. Um, Minister Hall, he was thinking about us. You know, when he says that he was the door, you know, he he's the he's the door. Jesus is the entrance. Jesus is the portal, the entrance, the passage that everyone must go through to to get to the Father. And he didn't lay down his life just for the Jews. He laid down his life for everyone. He he the the plan of salvation, the plan of redemption started the moment men fell from grace. God put the plan into, into action, you know, and that plan always included us. He, the Jews were his chosen people. The Israelites were his chosen people that he used to introduce himself to the world. They were set apart. They were his royal priesthood, but the plan always included us. And like Minister Hall said, I'm so grateful, you know, that God thought about us that he loves us. He loves all of us. You know, man was created in his image. I mean, we are all the offspring of, of Adam, you know, and so he loves all of us the same. Does anyone want to comment? No. And, and, and speaking to what Minister Hall said, um, I reminded, I believe is John 14 and 6, where Jesus said that I am the way, I'm, I'm the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And so I, I really love, love that, that passage because it points out that Jesus is the good shepherd, that he is at the door of the sheep pen watching over us. Go ahead, Dr. Carmen. Okay, I was, uh, I'm on my iPad and you have to tap at the top. I just figured it out. Cause I'm like, where does this, it keeps disappearing. Okay, there it is. Um, I, what I, I love about this was, it says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. That is, that is the, I mean, for me, that is a statement that leaps out to me because I mean, a good shepherd has no problem saying to you, I know you. And, and then by their actions, you learn them. I think about yeah, prior to me coming here, um, um, and in fact, a couple, I mean, a few years back when, um, when Pastor Paul, my birthday 21st came in there and, and we talked about me coming over, but the Lord hadn't told me to leave where I, well, he was telling me to prepare to leave, but I didn't know where I was going. But then when I got ready to come, the same conversation we had, and, and, and it was these words that he said them, and he has been true to those words, which was, I see what's in you. It's not just that we're friends. I see what's in you. I don't have a problem with that. You see me. My word is my word. Did, did y'all catch what I said? And it was like, I know what's in you, but I'm, I, said, I understand that. I just ask you to be faithful here and wherever the Lord is taking you or whatever he does, I don't have a problem with that because I see what's in you. He has been true to those words. Did you hear what I said? 
And when, because he has been true to those words, and I mean, some of them know I'll stay up to three or four o'clock in the morning to do edits or to do things that I wouldn't normally do because I see his heart, not just in what he said to me, but in what he is to other people in his conversations, just having a conversation with what his heart is for ministry and the people and where he wants to go. When you see somebody that loves people and are, is willing to throw his life out there for people, it's like, you know, I, I, I know what, you know, it's like he's willing to learn, he's willing to grow, he's willing to do that. When your leader is willing to do that, you can too. And you can know them as they follow Christ and you can feel free to grow in Christ because that leader knows you're, you know, wherever you're growing, you're enhancing their ministry and you can feel free to grow. It, I mean, you know, I say to people, people are like, you like, I have to come check it out. And I tell them, they're like, because there are a lot of great people floating around without a church right now. And I tell them, I said, you won't have to be afraid to be who you are. All you got to do is follow leadership. That is one of the greatest things I can say about Paul Brown. You can follow his leadership and not be afraid to be killed. And so there are a lot of people that are like, okay, when things open up a little bit more, I'm coming. That's great leadership to me. Come on, Dr. Carmen. I couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> Anyone want to comment on what Dr. Carmen said? No? Well, that leads me into the next video I want to show you guys. Um, this one. This is an example of how the the sheep hears the shepherd's voice. Come you, come you, come you, come you, come you. Come you, come you, come you. Come here, you come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, Isn't that beautiful? I mean, I, I was yeah. in tears when I saw this. You know, those sheep were far away. And remember, sheep cannot hear. I mean, they cannot see very well. But the moment they heard their shepherd voice, they came from far to, to run to him. And it, I just had a visual of Jesus, you know, standing there and just calling us and, and us just flocking to him, you know, because we, he loves us and we, we love him. Now, I thought that was a very, very, very beautiful video. Does anyone want to? Yes, I yeah. love. I love that video, how he waited. He had patience. And that's what God does to us. He have patience. And when we was out there in the world, 
he was calling us and he had patience enough and he loved us so that he waited and we answered his call. So I just love that video and then he fed them with the word. He fed them. Uh, Jesus fed over his words on today. So I just love that video. Thank you so much for that video. I'm keep talking with the video off. Praise God. I, I, I love that. I have some more videos to share, but I want to get um, back to the lesson. So let's go here. Okay, so um, that was the illustration of how the sheep knows um, the shepherd voice. And so the light on the world is that Jesus describes himself as both the good shepherd and the door. And as a good shepherd, he owned his sheep and was not a hired hand. The owner of the sheep had was on an intimate terms with his sheep that it, hold on, what did I say? Sheep. That is, he know he knew their names and personalities. He invested great amount of time in the sheep. So I'm going to pause here and show you another video. Okay, so in this video, you'll see how the shepherd takes time and um, invests his time in, with the sheep. So we're going off now to check the pregnant ewes. I don't normally feed them, but this close to lambing, they get quite a lot of extra feed. They need it, especially so many dew triplets this year. They're also going to get a lick bucket which has got loads of extra magic ingredients in there to uh, help them to lamp easily and create good colostrum. We're going in this today. So I'm gonna fast forward. So she's gonna go to look for her sheep. So she's gonna feed them. And so watch how she interacts with the sheep. That's right, let's get some feed. We'll do the lick bucket last. It'll be challenging enough to get the feed in. These are quite big. And I'm feeding them now because these are literally just five weeks off lambing. And so many of them are due triples this year that they need this extra feed. Doesn't fool all of them, obviously. So <laughs> oh, she, you know, she marks them so she can know who is who. A lot of the um the lambs, the sheep are pregnant, so she's saying that they have doubles and triples. And watch how she feeds them and lines them up. This is my best chance to count them. We've got two breeds here, really. We've got a lot of North England mules. So she lines them up so she can count them. And that's how Jesus is with us. Jesus feeds us and he counts us. He knows our name and he counts them one by one. There's another part where I want to get through it because this video, this is how she knows their names. Watch this. 67 here, none up by the haylage. Hey, Pixie. Come on, there you go. Hobie, how are you this morning? There you go. Oh, ow. Hey, <laughs> cheeky. Oh, hey, Hobie won. Hello, beautiful. She knows there all of their names. Twins. That's amazing. And then she goes to a whole, it's the work that a shepherd has to put in just to care for the sheep. Now she's going to walk to a whole nother part of the land to find all the sheep. She wants to make sure that each and every one of them are accounted for. In the field with them, one's just two just taken off there. Three, all three taken off. 15 over there. So I'm looking for 25 more. 23. <laughs> Come on then. 
You're learning, aren't you? These ones are young there, are still very shy. Give them a few. And then at the end, she brings out a special box full of nutrients for the ones that are really vulnerable. And so it's right here. So the ones that's really vulnerable are kept in a certain area. And she brings out this box of nutrients to feed them just to make sure that they're thriving. Out of the bucket. Whew. About 22 kilos, it's got heavy. Okay, girls. There you go, sweetie bucket. That will last about three days. So that's everything checked, everything's present. So this is how our relationship is with God. And I, you know, I really love that, that God just tends to each and every one of us personally. Does anyone want to comment on the videos? I, I've still been thinking about what you said about um, the hireling or the hired hand versus the shepherd. And, you know, some people didn't realize that they were hired hands. You know, like I was thinking, I've been thinking about, since we've been studying Jesus so in depth this quarter, um, I was thinking about how a human is not capable of doing what Jesus did without the Holy Spirit. Like you need the Holy Ghost to, to do the things that God is calling us to do. So looking at the shepherd, the shepherd has, you know, they have certain skills. Many of you on your jobs, you know, you interact with different people. Some of them have the potential to do things. Some of them are able to do things, but then there's other characteristics that slow them down or prevent them or are barriers to them fully walking in that, that, that role. And sometimes that's our, us, us too. But when we allow God to truly use us and we hear him, so that we can do what he's given us to do. You know, it's just, it's so amazing. And so thank you for these videos. These videos are so illuminating and eye opening into the nature of the sheep and the nature of the shepherd. So thank you for, I, I love that you gave us these videos today. Praise God. Thank you. I know sometimes um, I, I learn in all different ways and I have, I realize that other people learn in different ways. So I try to, to break it, to break it up, you know, cause some people are visual learners. Some people learn, learn by hearing. So I like to break it up. Thank you. First lady. So, um, to what you were saying, um, it was the hireling, uh, there we go. So, um, unlike the higher hand, the owner, will give his life necessary life if necessary to save his sheep from wolves and other predators and you see in the other video how she they had this vast amount of land but the most vulnerable were kept separate and you could see like the pen was kind of more closed off and so that's how God is with us you know it's like when we are babes in Christ um it seems like he's extra close to us, <laughs> you know, protecting us and, and it reveals himself to us more when we're babes in, in Christ. He, spe he spends pe special attention to us. But then as we grow in the Lord, you know, he lets us run off, run off a little bit more free and, and um, in open spaces, yet he's still there watching over us, looking for us, counting us to make sure that we're okay. Does anyone want to comment? I love the video too. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, mom. <laughs> so let's move on. Let's see to the sheepfold. Did I play that video? I, I, we pretty much knocking this lesson out. Okay, let's move to this part. The verses consist of a series of four I am statements. And so um, what I like about this part is, is the four I am statements. The I am statements are definite. So every time you hear God or Jesus say I am, those are definite. When God says what he is something, you can bank on it. You can put your money on it because God word doesn't waver. It doesn't change. And we, I just wanted to point out that we make sure that we pay attention 
to the I am statements. And you, Jesus used the I am statements because he knew that they were going to be able to relate to that, um, to the I am statements. And so he goes on to say he, um, one, he approaches directly. He enters at the gate. Two, he has God's authority. The gatekeeper allows him to enter. Three, he is trustworthy and meets real needs. The sheep recognize his voice and follow him. And four, he, is, he has sacrificial love. He is willing to lay down his life for the sheep. So Matthew 28 and 18 says, and Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. So Jesus has all authority. I have another note. Let's see, it's not opening. And like I said, Jesus is trustworthy because he comes to give us life. He comes not to, to harm us. As we mentioned in um, the previous verses in this lesson that the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. And John, 1 John 3 and 16 says, by this we know love because he laid down his life for us and also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And that's what I meant when I was saying that leaders, good leaders, they lay down their, their nature for the betterment of other people. And it's, it's a sacrifice that we make. And, and as we grow in the Lord, we grow in grace and we grow in mercy. It, it, it kind of is like a pet peeve when I hear people say, oh, well, that's just how I am. No, if, if how you are is hurting other people, is causing people to fall away, then you need to kill that part of you and take on the characteristics and the natures of Christ. And that's what I mean by laying down your life. You are killing the, the, the human fleshly part of your body that is not beneficial to you or beneficial for others. You're learning to, to walk in grace. You're learning to hold your peace and you're, you're having mercy on other people. Do anyone want to comment? No. Okay. You have said it all. <laughs> Thank you, mom. <laughs> so I'm going to jump over to this part of the page. Can you guys see it? Yeah, you can. So where it's highlighted, it says, since the sheep habitually lie down across the entrance, the, since the shepherds habitually lie down across the entrance of the sheepfold, with their bodies forming a barrier to thieves and wild beasts, they speak of themselves as the door to let the flock in or out and to protect the flock from intruders. Through the door, the flock goes in and out to, to graze and to rest. If the attack, if attacked or frightened, the sheep can retreat into the security of the fold. And I, let me see, I believe I have a video for that as well. Let me pull that up. Let's see. Here we go. So let me get this video up for you guys. Let me come on. There we go. My computer. Thank you guys for being patient. When I share from my my um my laptop is just everything just looks weird. Okay, there we go. So how do people go to heaven? Well, in answering this very important question, Jesus spoke figuratively about one of these, a sheep pen. So a sheep pen is made up of these stone walls that come together and form a narrow opening. So before evening sets in, the shepherd gets his flock into the protection of a sheep pen, and then he himself serves as the gate to a sheep, 
by sitting or laying in this narrow opening so that nothing can get in and nothing can get out without going through the shepherd. Did you guys enjoy that video? Yes, I did. Yes. <laughs> that so uh, um we pretty much went through the um entire lesson. Let me see if there's anything that I skip. No. So Patrice. Uh huh. I wanted to know if the um shepherd has to stay with the sheep all night and all day and if and if they stay do they change you know do they alternate or do they is it one shepherd all the time well it's it's mainly one shepherd but they do have like under shepherds kind of like the uh -huh. same way so okay. um it's probably like the family members or someone who is working for the main shepherd okay but, but it's mainly just one shepherd okay All and, right. and, and as you saw like in the video how um well that's an older version of a, um, a sheep pen as you saw in the other video with the lady they're more modern right but they're closed off so she doesn't necessarily have to be there all the time uh -huh. but in the um, sheep pen where there isn't no actual gate or door, there's always somebody there they, to protect the sheep at night, um, during the day, so just to make sure that they're um, safe from the predators. That's like God. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just amazing, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. I, mm -hmm. I, I like the video because it makes me alert. And it makes me sure that God is taking care of me. Not that I didn't think and I didn't know beforehand that God would take care of me, but it's something about when you see uh, the action. Mm -hmm. It's something about when you can understand the action. When you see the action, you have the assurance that God is there. And when you see the assurance, you know that God is taking care of you and that he is the gatekeeper. That's all. That's right, mom. Asa put in the comments um, to me, he said that the disciples are, are under shepherds. And that is correct. They were under shepherds. Jesus left the church, the flock, 
in their hands. He specifically taught and trained the disciples and they were to carry on the work of Christ. So thank you, Asa, for that. The, the, the disciples were under shepherds. Pastor Paul is an under shepherd. We're all under shepherds to someone. God has entrusted children to us, um, people to us, to, to watch over, to help them, to safeguard them, to nurture them in their walk with Christ. So every single one of us are accountable to somebody. Anyone want to comment? No, I like that point um, that everybody is accountable to somebody. That system works so well that the devil does two things. He tries to make others believe it's not a good system, yet he copied God's system in creating his kingdom of darkness. Like everything that God did in terms of like the spiritual unseen world, the enemy, you know, with the fallen angels that went with him, you know, he, he has, that's why there's principalities and they're, they're stationed over, you know, certain parts of the world because God had already dispatched angels and there's certain, you know, angels dispatched. Like Michael is the angel for Israel. And so the enemy mirrored his, his, his pattern, but he also tries to make us think that God's pattern is not the right way. That's correct, First Lady. And, and that's why I brought up this part of the stream and it says the thief's motive is diametrically opposed to that of the shepherd even though he opposes everything um why is it oh my gosh the even though um he is a copycatter as first lady mentioned he is he is so anxious to prevent the work of christ and people and to bring an end to the work of christ and in individuals lives so thank you for bringing that out first lady Anyone else have any comments? No? Okay, I'm going to go towards the end of the lesson. Okay, we did Jesus and how they follow a sheep. Okay, so I'm going to do this part right here. Let me share it. It says, but the phrase other sheep is a direct reference to the Jews and the Gentiles who not who had not yet to come as Minister Hall um, mentioned earlier. Therefore, they were still outside of Jesus' protection. The fold then is a metaphor for God's covenant people, the church, and none other than the shepherd Jesus will gather his sheep together into one fold. As they hear his voice, hallelujah, his people from among the Jews in Gentiles will come and be formed into one body of Christ as one flock with um, with one shepherd. That is that's that's amazing, and, and it th that kind of reminded me of the video that we the first video we watched. How the sheep from all over when they heard the shepherd's voice, they all came to the shepherd. And, and as leaders in the church, because on leaders in other people's lives, we have to remember that God gives a warning to the shepherds in Jeremiah 23, when, when the false shepherds, the Pharisees, the AKA religious leaders, when you scatter the sheep, you will have to deal with God personally. You will have to deal with God personally. But in Jeremiah, he also says that Christ, well, not Christ, but we know that it's Christ and he's speaking of, will gather them back together, making one fold, one body, one church. Anyone want to comment? What's the greatest thing is, as we, as she, that is what actually gets us out of bad situations. Come on. Our sheep, as a sheep, I hear his voice. And, and that, uh, that is what, what uh, gave me the strength, I guess, or the wisdom to get out of bad situations because it was like, I'm hearing the good shepherd and this is not a duplication of what the good shepherd is. Mm -hmm. So I've got to get out of this situation and go 
and when I hear the voice of the next shepherd yes. that's to lead me, I'll know based on the good shepherd, amen, Jesus. So I think that's important as we learn his voice, as we read scripture, as we surrender to God, we then we get it tuned to his voice and then we understand mm -mm, that's not him. I got to get out of here. That's not him. Amen, Dr. Carmen. I, I wrote that in one of my notes. I think I passed it up that how when Jesus is one with the father and, and, and God is one with him, we are in Christ and Christ is in us. And if we are in Christ, then we know his voice. If we know his voice, we know the father's voice. And so it's important, like Dr. Carmen said, that we, when we don't hear the voice of God in leadership, that we make our exit, that we find a way to get out of it because God, our leaders watch over our souls. And we have to make sure that we are following our leaders as they follow Christ. Amen, Sister Val says, we know God's voice. We have to know God's voice for ourselves. We have to. And you know, and you learn the voice of God by spending time with him in prayer, by reading his word and, and meditating on his word. Also in avenues like this, where God raises up teachers, you know, in, in, Bible, in Bible study, in Sunday school, you know, you have to study, you have to, you have to make sure that you're available to hear the word of God from other people's because from other people, because how do they um, hear without a preacher? You know, he raises up teachers, apostles for a reason, the fivefold ministry, because they are there to serve us, to feed us, to nurture us. So you, you fellowship is important. A flock is a, what was what's a beautiful thing about sheep and the flock is that there's fellowship. <laughs> when, when you are off alone, when the sheep wanders off alone, that sheep is most likely going to be devoured by a predator. So it's important that we remain with the flock and that we, we humble ourselves to leadership and, and put ourselves in a position where we can learn from our leaders and hear from God through our leaders, as Dr. Carmen said. Does anyone want to comment? Yeah, those are amazing, amazing points because we're 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 closer than ever to the 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 time where there's going to be many more false prophets. And you know, the Bible says, and I put it in the chat, 2 Timothy 3. That's so important for us to know. There's going to be so many people who have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, and the Bible says in another place, and I don't remember, I don't know the address. So, but you know, that if, if it, there may come a time where if time continued on, you know, even the very elect would be deceived. So we thank God for like giving us that discernment and that insight to know, but you know, so many are gonna come and claim to be in, in God's name and not be so. So we need more than ever, we need to stay in our word. We need to read the Bible daily. We need to pray, you know, and we can't be distracted by things that look like, that look like they're right and they're not. Amen. Thank you, First Lady. Sister Val said, we have a great under shepherd and Pastor Paul. Thank God for sending me back to Saints Home after 15 years in another ministry. I agree, Sister Val, we have a wonderful, under, he, he's the best, he is the best, and, and our first lady is the best, I mean, they are great examples of what serving leadership should look like, and I'm so grateful to God that I'm able to, to witness and serve underneath, under them. Um, I'm going to end with this because it's 1030, it says, in choosing to die for the sins of the world, Jesus once again proved his sovereign authority over his own destiny. If Christ had not chosen to die, no one would have had the power to kill him. The work of redemption 
is done by the Father through the Son. Jesus laid down his life in order to take it up again. In Jesus' death, the penalty for sin is paid in full. And the resurrection, uh -oh, the resurrection is a vindication of the Son as the atonement of sin. Let's just let that seek in. You know, I don't think any of us can fully understand the weight of the cross because we now are shielded by grace and mercy. And also those in Christ will never experience the pain, the wrath and judgment of sin. You know, and, but Christ did. Christ suffered the full wrath of God when he bore the sins of the world on the cross. Let me say that again. Christ suffered the full wrath of God when he bore our sins on the cross. Christ, who is God, was separated from himself. He was separated from God when he bore the, 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 world, the sin of the world on him. Let that seek in. Because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God and Jesus is the word. So can you imagine never being separated from yourself? But it's uh, when I thought about this, I thought of those movies, right? How when, when a person dies and their soul leaves their body and they're looking back, right, on their body and they just want to get back in their body. They don't understand what's going on. I can imagine that's probably how Christ felt when he yelled out on the cross, Father, Father, why have thou forsaken me? You know, and so we, we have to make sure that um, we don't undermine the work of the cross and that we remember that we just keep Christ in the right perspective. You know, he is so worthy to be praised. And because of him, I will never, ever experience or see God's wrath. And it's because of him, I'm able to make mistakes, right? Because of grace and mercy and repent and ask for forgiveness and not feel the wrath of God or, or see the penalty of my sin. Does anyone want to comment? That's good. I, I want to I, I'm, we are grateful that we do not have to experience the full wrath of God. And the more we think about that, we can just celebrate God's goodness every day. Even then, even when we go through trials and tribulations, it doesn't even compare to what Jesus went through for us. Right. The most brutal death in the history of time. That's what Christ experienced just for us because he loved us because he is the good shepherd and he laid down his life for us. So we can be reconciled back to God. So we can thrive. Amen. So father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you God for this reminder, for this lesson that Christ is the good shepherd. God, I thank you for sending your only begotten son into this world to die for us, God. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for nourishing us. I thank you for watching over us. I thank you for not ever letting us wander too far away from you, God. I thank you that I know your voice, God. And I thank you that you just care so much for us, God. I pray for each and every individual in this lesson, um, in this Sunday school class, God. I pray that you will touch them, God, that you will cover them and that you will keep them in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for our service on today, that you will bless the men as they go forth, that you will bless the service and that the Holy Spirit will fall in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. If you want to be a blessing to the Sunday school department, you can do so via Givelify or Cash App. Um, on Cash App, make sure you put in a memo, Sunday school. And on Givelify, click the um, Sunday School envelope and give there. Any questions before we log off or any statements? I enjoyed the Sunday School lesson. Praise God. Thank you, Mom. Well, that's it. For Sister Val said the last statement was deep. 
thank God for grace and mercy. I love those videos too, really. Praise God. Thank you, everyone. I just, I just thank God for leading me to them because I just ask God to help me to relay like the, the, the message of this lesson, you know, so that we can really experience this and to see. And so it's nothing but God who led me to these videos. And I'm so grateful for him. With that, we're going to close out. Everyone have a blessed Sunday and I will see you guys at church on today. First lady, right. do you have any comments? No, this was wonderful. I'm gonna um I'm gonna download it and put it on YouTube. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see everyone later. Have a blessed day. Love you okay. guys. Bye. Bye.